just a little review from last week. You know, uh, there's this philosopher called Aristotle, who lived around 300, 3rd century, about 300 years before Jesus Christ. Um, <clears throat> Aristotle had a lot to do and a lot of contributions, significant contributions to philosophy. Same thing with Plato. Plato was the student of Socrates. You know those names? <clears throat> so we have what we call Platonism and Aristotelian, talking about the existence of God and all those. <clears throat> I, I mentioned Aristotle because uh, although he was pagan, he, he didn't believe in God himself. But he had, he had some good contributions towards making sense of homilies or giving preaching. When anyone who, for anyone who preaches, especially the priests who give homilies, he is talking about three important elements. One is ethos. Remember that from last week? Ethos meaning, that's E-T-H-O-S. Ethos means the character of the speaker, of the preacher. In other words, the credibility of the preacher. <clears throat> if uh, a guy named David Petraeus would talk to you about faithfulness, does he have credibility? No. No, he doesn't, because, because of the scandal he's in. It's such a hot seat now, right? David Petraeus. That's what I mean. The, whoever is, is preaching, whoever is teaching, must have credibility and character. That's ethos. The second one is pathos, <laughs> P-A-T-H-O-S. It's the second pillar. Uh, pathos means the speaker's ability to induce the listeners. That's pathos. P-A-T-H-O-S. The first one is ethos. Ethos is character, credibility. Second one is pathos. Pathos is the skill of the preacher to Induced, to entice. Charisma. Charisma, the audience. Okay. And what's the third one? Logos. In, in, logia in, in, uh, in Latin. Logos means the content. What is the content? What is being talked about? So those three must be present for a homily, for a speech, for a talk to be productive. And it makes all sense. No character, no credibility. Nonsense, right? Uh, <clears throat> boring, boring speaker. There are people who are so boring, right? People fall asleep. So again, that's no direction. And the third one is, if I start talking about Something that you're not interested in. Like, I love, I love watching astronomy or science. I enjoy those things. But of course, I can only do God. When it talks about theology, oh, my eyes will be firmly on, the, on, the, on TV. If it's about God. Or it's about science. Because uh, personally, there's no contradiction between science and theology. There's, there's no contradiction? There's no contradiction. Between theology and science? Yes. Um, or shall we call religion? There's no contradiction. A lot of people say the Big Bang, right? Big Bang? Big Bang. The Big Bang. There was a, a, a mover. And there was a cause. You know, there's a cause and there's an effect, right? Mm -hmm. The Big Bang was an effect. Something or someone caused it to happen. So there's no contradiction. Science does not say what caused it. Nobody knows. Religion has the answer. God did. What about evolution? That's science. Evolution is science. Is that is that contradiction to the dictatorial to religion? No. 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 There's no contradiction. But don't we come from Adam and Eve? Yes. The scientists saying it's the man evolved from uh, from uh, microorganisms, right? But
Well, the church does not accept evolution. Darwin. Who would like to come from monkeys? <laughs> you don't want to come from monkeys? That's what I tell people. When, when I'm confronted with that question, I ask, okay, so your, your ascendants, ancestors were monkeys. My ancestor was Adam and Eve. Yours is yours are the monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That, you know. <clears throat> what science does, you see, the bottom line is this. Science can discover the effects. But the ultimate cause, science cannot answer. That's why I call God the uncaused cause. Does that make sense to you?
Pain is just like suffering, right? Suffering. And poverty is likewise. What does it mean to be poor physically? In, in materially, what does it mean to be poor? No money, maybe no job, maybe no maybe food. no food, no house, no car. Right? Broken fridge, broken stove, who knows? Leaking roof. All of these are, right, incidentals to being poor. Right? You know, I've been, I've been conducting Bible classes. In my little experience, it's easier to invite simple people to God than the very rich and successful people. You agree? Generally. You know those those people wearing suits you know, on Wall Street? You think you can invite them? You know, yesterday I, I took the bus from Newark. The number 13 bus. And it was so crowded, really, but I made it inside. I was just standing Standing by, you know, the, the bus that is like two buses in one, yep. uh, attached. I was there, that revolving thing, so when it turns, it's that does this. Anyways, and there's this uh, black woman near the front of the bus who was giving a discourse about Jesus. <laughs> Which is, I was, I was listening, I was not looking at her, but I was listening intently. I didn't hear anything. That's contrary to faith. Everything she said was okay, it's all right. Although I didn't say anything, but the people were kind of not very receptive. Number one, it's probably the wrong place. The reason it's the wrong place is because people were tired. It's the end of the day. It was getting it was dark already. It gets dark easily now, early, right? What, five o'clock? Five o'clock, it's dark already. And <clears throat> people were tired, people were eager to get home, maybe people were hungry. That's how it is when you're commuting home. You want to get home as fast as you can, so you can change and, and get settled, and probably eat and get rested, right? So, <clears throat> is that okay? What do you think? Is that all right? Make a public discourse in the bus that's so crowded and talking about Jesus. Well, maybe she thought it was a good opportunity since there were so many people there. She's also going home and tired. And she says she's not going to do that. I, I don't know, know if she's on her way home. Uh, well, we could only assume. I mean, yeah, yeah. But I'm, I'm sure that most of the other people are. Maybe she thinks that's the only time she could go. Yeah. What do you think? Is that all right? I guess I'm on the right to on the train at those times. She had, she had a captive audience. The, the God and the, the courage to do it, to talk about Jesus, which is a good, good thing. But it's like you said, <coughs> even if you can have one person here, you'd be content. Well, maybe that's what she thinks too, that even That's what she if you can catch one yeah. to listen, maybe mm -hmm. it's only one, one person. And, and I was watching, I was observing all the others in the bus, um, who, who would be receptive and who won't be. I would say about 99.9% .9 were not receptive. They, they completely ignored her, didn't ask her anything, not looking at her, and just went by their business. People getting on board, people leaving, you know, just come and go, that's it. So I'm not really sure. It, it, which reminds me of Ecclesiastes chapter 1. In Ecclesiastes, we have, a, yeah, we have there, there's a time for praying, there's a time for rejoicing, there's a time for crying, there's a time for grieving, there's a time for everything. In fact, there's a time for war, and there's time for peace. Ecclesiastes chapter 1. We 
which is, uh, I'm just reminded of that. I really don't have an opinion because I really don't know what the motive is. I really don't know what's the background like. Or maybe she had profound experience uh, personally with Jesus, who knows? And uh, she's truly and genuinely in love with God, which is a good thing. <clears throat> I also saw someone in the path train who would have a radio like this and he would, he would play, I don't know, maybe it's a tape, it's a CD, whatever, and it's a rap, a rap song, and she would, he would sing, he would sing, uh, uh, accompanied by that radio, about Jesus, but a, a hip-hop song, hip-hop song about Jesus, and then he would collect money. <laughs> uh, he says he has a uh, path train ministry, as some we call it. His ministry is to sing and proclaim about Jesus and then get some donations. But if he's got a ministry, he shouldn't charge. He shouldn't charge. Not <coughs> oh, no, no, that cost you. He, he seemed like he was not that. He, he, was, he was young. Okay. He's a Hispanic man. <coughs> Anyways. These are just examples of poverty. And our paradox is the paradox of poverty. This you will find this in the first reading of last week. This is the first reading last Sunday. The first book of Kings, chapter 1, verses 10 to 16. The first book of Kings. And this is related to the gospel last Sunday, which is Mark chapter 12. Remember the widow, the widow's wife. The widow's wife. That's why this is the topic of this week. And the reason this is so, this is related to for next week's gospel. Next week's gospel is Mark chapter 12, talking about the end times. We just keep waiting, it will surely come. Parousia. You see that in Mark chapter 12. So you can see that it all boils down to this. If you want to be, to be uh, profoundly struck by the message of this week, it better be this. Okay? Now, in my experience, you know, I, I told you I was a legionary for many years. And one of the, one of the assignments I was assigned was, <coughs> we have a, a, an image of the Our Lady, Our Lady of the Holy Rosary, and we pray the rosary in various houses. Every Sunday, we would, uh, we would go to a different house with a statue, just to encourage families to pray the rosary. That was my job. Many years. I was going around with many houses. And now my brother is doing it. My younger brother is doing it now. I said, I'm past that because I'm doing other things. And he's still doing it. Uh, there was one time I joined him. <clears throat> and I noticed that the houses only the poor people would welcome us into their homes. Only the poor people? Yeah. Those who are not rich people. That's what I mean. <coughs> you know Washington Ave, all the way up to Clifton Commons? That's ritzy. Very lovely. Just before reaching the King's Land, Washington Ave, on the right hand side, there's a big community there. Beautiful community. The houses are like in Florida. Big houses. And there's a cave. And there's a there's a guard house. You think you can bring the, the lady there to pray the rosary? In my years of doing it, I never got invited by the very rich people. 